Hi, welcome back to another very exciting Copycat Wednesday here at the PhotoshopTrainingChannel.com. My name is Jesus Ramirez. Thank you so much for joining me today. I know it's not Wednesday, but I still wanted to get an episode out for you this week. And today we're going to recreate the Arkansas movie poster in Photoshop. It's a really cool movie poster, and I think that'll teach us a lot about clipping mask, link layers, and the camera raw filter. And if you want to follow along with me, then make sure you download the asset files. I'm placing a link below in the description under tutorial images. Why don't we jump right into the tutorial? These are the images that I'm going to work with. We're going to use this document to create the poster. Notice that I have a white background and a logo. You can use whatever logo you want. It could be a text file, a pixel layer, or a vector graphic. As long as you have a logo, that's all you need. In this case, we're going to use a similar logo as to the one found in the original movie poster. I also have this portrait of this man. And I have two portraits that we're going to use in the composite. And finally, I have this photo of a car. So let's start with the car first. And what I'm going to do is make a selection. I need to select everything but the sky. And you can just use the quick selection tool for that. With the quick selection tool active, you can use the right bracket key on the keyboard to make a larger brush and just paint over the bottom part of the photo. Make sure that you get the car as well. The selection doesn't need to be perfect. As long as it's good enough, you should be fine. And what you need to do now is simply click on the layer mask icon to create a layer mask and always name your layers. I'll call this layer car. And I'll right click and convert it into a smart object so that you can apply non-destructive adjustments, distortions, filters, and transformations. Then I'm going to select the move tool click and drag the layer into my working document and release. Photoshop will place the layer in that document and I can now press Control T on Windows, Command T to transform. If you don't see the transformation handles, you can press Control Zero, Command Zero on the Mac to zoom out and see the transformation handles. This is called the bird's eye view. Once again, that's Control Zero on Windows, Command Zero on the Mac. And you can then click and drag on these corner handles to scale the image in and use that same keyboard shortcut, Control Zero, Command Zero, to zoom back in. And what I'm going to do now is right click and flip the image horizontally. And I'll click and drag it and place it down here and scale up like so. And I'm just making sure that I get the car and the ground into position. So right about here, this seems to be like a good spot. I'll click on the check mark to commit the changes. And what I'll do now is change the background color. So I'll just create a solid color fill adjustment layer. And from here, I'll select the color that is just off red and I'll press OK. Just to keep my layers panel clean, I'll right click on the layer mask and delete it. And I'll just call this red background. And since I don't really need this original background, I'm just going to select it and tap on the backspace key. That's the delete key on the Mac to get rid of that background layer. I'm just trying to keep my layers panel as clean as possible. What I'll do now is select the car layer and create a solid color fill. I'll make it black and I'll clip it to the layer below by pressing Control Alt G Command Option G on the Mac just to make the car completely black. And this is not really affecting the logo. It's also black. That's why it looks the same. But let's forget about that and just look at this bottom part. What I'll do now is zoom in, and if you look at the original poster, you can actually see the tail light of the car. So I'm going to try to bring that out. So I'll select the brush tool, and I'll paint with black to hide the black pixels. There it is. And I can tap on the X key on the keyboard to swap my foreground and background color. And I can paint with white to reveal the effect. So I'm just going to paint the effect back in, tap the X key one more time, and just click on that area just one time, like so. And then I can use the density slider in the properties panel with the layer mask selected, sort of as an opacity for that layer mask. If I bring it down to zero, you'll notice that that completely disappear and I can adjust it accordingly so I can bring it out just a little bit. And I can do the same thing in other areas of the car as well. You can see some of the details in the car in the original poster and that's what I'm trying to replicate here. Also, something that I didn't do before that I'm noticing that is an issue is that the edges are very jagged on my mask. To fix that, I can double click on the car smart object. It opens it up in a new tab. And what I can do is double click on the layer to bring up the selected mask workspace. From here, I can smooth the layers by dragging the smooth slider to the right. 
and that smooths the edges on my mask and I can increase the contrast to make them sharper. In some cases, you will need to select the brush tool and then paint in detail that was hidden. And when you're done, you can just press OK, close that tab and make sure that you click on the Yes button to save and Photoshop will update the composite and that looks much, much better. I'll double click on the hand tool to fit the image to screen. And what I'll do now is work on the two portraits. I'll close the car document because I don't need it anymore. And I'll start with man number one. And what I'll do is click on this lock icon so that I can get the background removal button in the properties panel. So there is no remove background button, but as soon as I click on this lock, you'll see the quick action called remove background. I'm going to click on that to remove the background using artificial intelligence, machine learning technology known as Adobe Sensei. And then I can click on the layer mask and click on select the mask and we can adjust the mask accordingly. In this case, Photoshop did a really good job. So I'm just gonna smooth it a bit and contract it a bit and press OK. And we probably won't need much more than this. I'll now right click and convert this layer into a smart object. I'll call it man one. And with the move tool selected, I'm going to click and drag him into our working document and make sure that he is outside of that clipping mask. Notice that he's clipped. So I'll press Control Alt G on Windows, Command Option G on the Mac to remove that clip and then press Control T on Windows, Command T on the Mac to transform. I can't see the transformation handle, so I'll go into the bird's eye view by pressing Control zero, Command zero on the Mac, and that zooms out so that we can see the transformation handles and I can scale them down, of course. So I'm gonna scale them down as best as I can. And I'm doing a very rough job right now. I may need to move this a little later on, but for now, this is gonna be good enough. I'll double click on the hand tool to fit the image to screen. And what I'll do now is turn them into black and white, add a little more contrast and add a few shadows. One of the easiest ways to do that is by going into the filter menu and selecting the camera raw filter. And from here, we're gonna make this into a black and white image. So above the basic panel, you'll see your profile. You can simply select a monochrome profile like so, and that makes it into a black and white. Another thing that you can do is simply click on this BNW button and that does the same thing. And then you can adjust your image accordingly. You can make the highlights a little bit darker, maybe the shadows as well, just to add a bit more contrast. Obviously drag the contrast lighter to the right. And then in this case, I'll add texture by dragging the texture slider to the right, a little bit of clarity, which is contrast in edge pixels. And another thing that you can do is go into the black and white mixer and from here, either brighten or darken the original colors in the image. For example, I can make the reds brighter or darker. See how that's affecting his lips and other areas of his face. So adjust it accordingly, the oranges, and then the other colors in the image. There's probably not gonna to be too many greens, a few aquas, not many aquas, a little bit of blue. So maybe I'll make his sweater just a little bit darker so that there's some contrast and just adjust the sliders accordingly. Then I'm going to press okay. And that applies the camera raw filter to my smart object. For now, I'm going to collapse it by clicking on this icon just to have more room in the layers panel. What I'll do now is go into the man number two layer and do the same thing. Unlock the layer, remove the background. Just for the sake of time, I'm not going to fine tune the mask, but feel free to do so in your own project. Then right click on the layer and convert it into a smart object. I'll call the smart object man number two. And I'll press the V key on the keyboard to select the move tool and I'll click and drag him into our working document. I'll press Control T to transform, Command T on the Mac, and then Control zero on Windows, Command zero on the Mac to zoom out, and I can click and drag on the corner handles to scale the image right about here, and I'll click on the check mark to commit the changes. I'll double click on the hand tool to fit the image to screen. And what I'll do is I'll place the man number two layer below the man number one layer. 
And just to make things easier for us, I'm going to take the camera raw adjustments from man number one and copy them into man number two. And it's very easy to do. All you need to do is expand the smart object, hold Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and click and drag the smart object onto the second layer and Photoshop will apply it automatically. It looks really, really good. What I'm gonna do now is edit the camera raw adjustment just to add a little more drama to the image. I'm gonna add some shadows and I'll start with man number one and I'll double click on the camera raw label to bring up the camera raw filter. And from here, I can simply select the adjustment brush and I can paint in my adjustments. I'm going to make the brush size a bit larger like so. You could also use the bracket keys on the keyboard and I'm just going to paint on the right side of his face, like so. You really can't see anything because my mask is disabled, but that's okay. I'm just gonna bring the exposure down and you can see that shadow that is being added to that area and I can adjust my highlights. I can make them darker, also make my shadows a bit darker. And if need be, you can continue painting on the rest of the portrait. So that's what I'm doing, just adding a shadow onto his face. I'll press okay and you can see how the changes are applied to my working document. And I can do the same thing on this layer below. I can expand the smart object, double click on the camera raw filter label. It brings up the photo and I can go back into the adjustment brush. And in this case, I'll just decrease the exposure a little bit so that I can actually see what I'm painting on. See that, see how you can see now what areas I'm painting on because of the adjustment. And then you can continue adjusting the image, making it darker, adjusting the highlights, the shadows, whatever you want. And you can press OK when you're done. And you can see now how we made both portraits more dramatic. I'll collapse both smart objects in the layers panel to have more room to work with. What I'll do now is work with my logo layer, which is down here. And I'm going to click and drag that logo layer right here below man number two. And what I'll do is select man number two, hold shift and click on man number one to select both layers. And I'll press control J on Windows, command J on the Mac to duplicate those. I wanna place those right down here above the red background. So what I'll do is I'll just use the keyboard shortcut. Instead of dragging, you can make it easier on yourself just by pressing the control key and the left bracket key on the keyboard. That's command left bracket key on the keyboard on the Mac and notice how they're just moving down the layers panel all the way to the bottom. And I went too far. Notice how I placed both layers way at the bottom. I actually want them above the red background so I can press control and the right bracket key to move those two up. And that's exactly where I want them. Next, I'm going to select both of these layers. So I'll hold shift and click on both to select them. And then I'll press control alt G command option G on the Mac to create a clipping mask around the logo. And if I come down to these two layers and disable them, you can see the effect that we got. We got that really, really cool effect. And what I'm going to do now is go back to these two layers here at the bottom and I'm going to put them into a group and I'll call this bottom faces and I'll put them inside of that group, select them and drag them into the group. And now they're inside and you can see the indentation here, which shows you that they're inside of the group. And with the group selected, I'm going to change the blending mode from pass through to luminosity. And then I'll change the opacity to 25%. And I'll open the group select the man one copy and then select the man one original layer by holding control and clicking. Both layers are now selected and I'm going to click on the chain link icon here to link those two layers together. And the reason that you want to do that is so that if you select one of the layers, it automatically selects the second one and you can move them accordingly. See that? See how I'm moving them at the same time and it creates the effect that you see there. And it doesn't matter which one I select. If I scroll down, I can select the man number one copy and press control T command T to transform and I can scale and it will transform both layers at the same time. So I can make this layer larger like so. 
and clicking the check mark to commit the changes. If the color comes back in the image, this is just a redraw error that Photoshop has. If I go to the man number one copy, you'll see that the color is showing in the thumbnail. But if I disable the camera raw filter and enable it again, the black and white effect comes back. I'm not really sure what the issue is with that, but that's something that I've encountered when working with link layers and smart objects and doing this whole thing. But you can see the quick solution to that glitch. But anyway, what you want to do now is do the same thing with man number two. Select man number two, hold control, command on the Mac and click on the man number two copy and click on the chain link icon. And with the move tool selected, you can place them anywhere that you want. I'll place his chin here at the bottom of the S. Click on the pivot point. If you don't see the pivot point, you can enable it by clicking on this icon and place that here. And then you can hold shift and alt to scale from that point. See that? See how I'm scaling from that point? And just keep adjusting the layer until you find a good spot for it. You can zoom out and scale it even further. When you're happy with your result, you can click on the check mark to commit the changes. And when you get your composite to this point, all you need to do is fine tune the layers. You can scale them, move them around, adjust the black and white camera raw adjustments, anything that you need to get your image to look the way that you want it to. This is my final result. And I didn't do anything that I didn't show in the tutorial. All I did is took a few minutes to fine tune the adjustments that I've already made. And you saw how I made all of them. I would also like to let you know that I recently started a new TikTok account where I do one minute Photoshop tutorials. You can check it out if you like. Link below in the description. I've already gotten over 80,000 subscribers in just one week. So thank you guys so much for that for those of you that watch both my youtube channel and now my tiktok account and if you haven't subscribed to the photoshop training channel here on youtube make sure that you do that now by clicking on the subscribe button and also the notification buttons so that you get notified whenever i post a new tutorial thank you again for joining me on another copycat wednesday not on a wednesday but i really hope that you enjoy the tips and techniques that i showed in this video thank you so much for watching i'll talk to you again in the next photoshop tutorial